What's up, guys? We're back in business. Let's go get it at the live arena. There's um, an interesting thing that happened yesterday. We got the quality of life roadmap and update. And I was actually planning to make another video about it. I have some, some opinions that maybe I'll leave, leave for another video. I got kind of good... Um, angle and idea how to do it uh, but um okay so we're against armands instantly w one interesting thing that um well i kind of want to leave half of it for the other video because uh like i said i have a good idea that that could be its own topic but uh they did the roadmap thing and if you didn't see it, then go look at it from official Discord. And that was kind of... Um, are we going to go with UDK? No. It, it was kind of an homage. Homage? Omits? I don't know how you say it. Homage to the old... Uh, uh, old roadmap that Raid had about the upcoming updates. That kind of took long time to fulfill and it didn't go exactly like they promised but people liked it and the roadmap was very uh, discussed oh, he's putting me <laughs> putting me in a very hard place maybe we're just gonna go with um, Necret it's not gonna be that good though anyway so they kind of did a new roadmap about the, the upcoming quality of life, like buffs or updates, however you want to call it. And I like the concepts, it's some stuff that I have been asking for a long time, that I have been talking about both in videos and in content creator chat, and it, it does kind of feel like they were directly responding to people. But th they were also literally doing it in another way, because there was multiple people that were talking about the roadmap. I don't know who brought it up. Maybe it was me who brought it up, or it was somebody else. But we were discussing the old roadmap in the like raid content creator chat a while ago, maybe like a couple of weeks ago or something. And I was saying something like it was super good. Like, could we get another roadmap? Like, when are they gonna do more of those? And now they actually did a roadmap, and I think was it Cyrilla? I think Cyrilla said in the content creator chat that uh, the roadmap wasn't like a thing that they had intended to do for quality of life uh, updates, and they did it because of popular man and us liking roadmaps. So, so that was kind of cool. Uh, actually, now that I got the A2, I guess I should kill the Ronda. Assuming that I can do it. But yeah, I'm really, I really like the quality of life stuff. I've been talking about it, like I said, both in videos and I've specifically asked about multiple things that was in the roadmap in the content creator chat directly from them. So I guess players should be happy, even though we always complain about it. Okay, this battle was looking... Damn, he's very high points. I didn't even notice it. It actually started out pretty well. I think we might be good. I don't want to risk it. I'm just gonna kill the Yumeko with A3 because... Oh. Oh, damn it. I should have done it on Ronda. Okay, my bad. I was gonna say I don't want to risk it, but okay, never mind. She didn't even die to that. Okay, that was a massive mistake. I don't know if that's gonna cause us to fight, but... That was a massive setback. But yeah, I think I'm gonna ask somebody else that has kind of a perspective on the um, like Plarium side of things about the updates and player demands and so on. It would be an interesting discussion if I if I can get him to it, we'll see. If not, I'll make my own video because it was super cool that we're getting that stuff. I mentioned it before, but many other games like uh, 
basically all of the recent ones, Watch Your Realms, Dragonair, they all have this kind of uh, quality of life stuff. And obviously, Plarium is putting a lot of effort into the game and still making content after five years. So there's really no good reason to not not do those kind of uh, small things that don't really directly affect the game balance or gameplay, but just make it a lot more convenient and uh, like, uh, yeah, I guess convenient is the best way to put it. Okay, this fight, I think maybe I could have won if I A-treat the uh, Ronda and not the Yumeko. I kind of thought I would have enough damage to do it, but that was my bad. It's kind of hard because, of course, Harima passive is mitigating the damage so much, but I still thought I would have enough damage to do it, but I guess not. By the way, I think this time we might as well look at the Reddit early, because I'm super interested to see what Reddit thinks about the quality of life update. And what, what do you guys think about it? Let me let me know in the comments. Is it um, exactly what you've been asking? Is there something that is missing? Okay, since actually when we are talking about it, might as well take out the picture. But like I said, I'm pretty sure I'm gonna make another video about this like every other CC is probably gonna do. But I think it might be from a little bit from different angle. But we have the seven improvements that they already shade a bit light on and that's gonna be stuff like instantly ranking up multiple champions to the next rank with one click like I said other games have this mechanic so it doesn't seem that big deal for Plarium to do and it's gonna make champion training tournaments and just progression in ra raid much, um, much more chill then Epic Champion Empowerment. I have spoken about this a lot before. I don't know why they didn't do it from the start. I suspect it was because Epics were kind of strong actually during the time that we got Empowerment and multiple Epics were even in the Platinum Arena meta. Like no, not even like used in Gold 4 but actually in Platinum. Like Bunts, Magnar, uh, but they are kind of at different times, but like Magnar, Rotos, uh, um, not Rotos, Magnar, Rot Magnar, Wokot, Seeker, Rector, um, what's its name? Kind of forgetting. I kind of talked about this on the other video I made yesterday with rats, by the way, so make sure to watch it. But it was uh, Sandless Survivor. It actually used to be meta. I was kind of confusing it yesterday that it was supposed to be barbarians but it was actually or orcs it kind of looks like a barbarian anyway sound as survivor sky that salmon there was multiple epics that were very very actually relevant in the meta and i guess for instance if wokot got empowerment he was already super good i was finishing plus with him Maybe it would have been too good, who knows, but I guess it's better late than ever. I think um, lots of new players are gonna be able to use it, and not even just new players, but any old or mid-game players, you can still empower your champions or epics for faction wars or cursed city and so on, so I think this is, this is good. Artifact presets, that's gonna mean that you can swap item sets with other champions. Super good. I've been asking for it. I've been making long rants about that in CC chat, so... Nice. I don't know what accessory filters mean. I, I guess it means that you can search for the specific sets like reaction and so on. I, I, I probably it must mean that. I mean, I've been asking for that as well. But all of these are super good thing. They could have been I keep going for Classic Arena. They could have been added to the game much earlier, but I'm super happy that they added at this point at least and show that they listen to the players and so on. Okay, Artifact Removal Booster Item. I don't know what it means. Maybe it means that there's like some 
consumables that give you free um, item swapping without silver. I truly don't know what that is. And then Hydra class participation rewards. No idea what that is either, but probably it has something to do with the fact that um, I'm guessing, I don't know, but only the top three can get the stone skin. Maybe it's something like that. If it is, then it would be super good. I guess that's kind of the reason why right now I'm clanless as well, so could even be a little bit personal to me, but it is what it is. Um, okay, so he's... I got... By the way, this drafting looks pretty good. I don't know how good roster he's gonna have, but um, I got pretty much all of the things that I wanted. I got both Armands and I got my Polymorph champion against his double debuffer team. But yeah, epic empowerment, super interesting. Maybe I should make my own epic empowerment tier list, but um, I do like the idea of this. Kind of funny that Madame Ceres is so low. I guess she isn't really, really super relevant anymore. By the way, when I was talking about the um, champions that were used in Platinum Arena, I didn't mention Madame Ceres, which is kind of embarrassing because she's of course the most used epic in Platinum Arena ever. Uh, like, I mean, she's one of the most used champions in like Classic Arena, just overall, even, even at this point when she isn't really used, but back in the day, every single team was using using series in offense. Okay, so he, he's like quadrupling down with the with the dead boss. Uh, yeah, we're just gonna go with Angkor and Rotos, yeah. He, he has very strong team, everybody has debuffs, but we did get the Polymorph and a Cleanse in our team, so this is pretty much best that I can do against this. Uh, interesting. Yeah, I, I have both Armands and Narses, so I kind of have two ways to deal with the UDK. I don't know if I actually have to ban it. I think I'm still... Yeah, either Harima or Galatir ban, but let's go for Harima this time. Let's see what happens. I mean... He didn't ban the Ankara, and I would say that Galatir lockout in many ways is... Um, or maybe it's better to say him as a champion, but... He does have a good lockout. It's both buff strip and uh, lockout in debuff form, which means that you can kind of sometimes maybe use it in tandem with others that do debuffs like he has on his team. But we do have Ankara that can cleanse it, and um, I guess it's gonna go on Rotos and not Narses because he has higher crit damage, but. Um, uh, maybe that's yeah that, that might be bad if if uh, Ankara claims Narses and not Rotos, I would have uh, already won the fight, but yeah actually now it's gonna be a little bit trickier. Mm -hmm. Now I'm kind of second guessing, maybe I should have should have banned the UDK after all and not the uh, Arema. It's kind of a weird mechanic that even though it's a partner bonus, it doesn't automatically go on Narsus if you have Narsus on the team. I mean the passive that removes uh, debuffs, but it goes on the champion with highest crit damage. Which is gonna be Rotos sadly this time and not my Narsus. There's a good possibility that he can get debuffed though. But the Wukong is also gonna hit hard, so we'll see how many turns I can survive, if any. I might just die on the first. Okay, he didn't go for the A2 yet. Ah, oh, come on. I'm really hoping for those polymorphs. Mm. 
Well, I, I guess we're getting a good, um, good hard battles and I need to kind of wake up. Wake up and not, uh, I can't, um, I can't be hazy and slack off. I need to think about these things. Like, the last fight I totally could have won it, I just screwed it. But, okay, now Rotos is dead and it was actually kind of good for us because now the, now the Angora passive is going on, um, Narses. I mean, he does have the Wukong passive, so it's not over yet, and I don't think we have the damage to one-shot the Galatir without the shield or strengthen on him, but at least we got some breathing room and uh, we have a chance to fight back again. Yeah, I think we're of course gonna go for the Dutch's revival to get everybody back up. He doesn't have the A2 on Rotos, so he's in that um, threatening right. Right. Okay, actually, never mind. We already won this. We no. Ah, I always forget about that passive from Galatir. If I had the damage to kill the Galatir, we would have got an extra turn because of Angora anyway. So at that point, it would have been over. Okay, nice. I think we got this. It was kind of looking bad, and I totally could have lost it, though. I don't know if you guys can hear it. I don't think I have any... Maybe I can actually look for some, but I don't think I have any, like, soundtracks of bird chirping. But you can definitely hear the spring outside, because um, I have, like, window open. I like to listen to the... the um, I don't know how you say it, like the ambient nature voices like a hippie and there's lots of uh, birds chirping right now Al almost seems like sounds like um no tree and some kind of like uh like a background music soundtrack from some like uh animal documentary or, or something like that just like tons of birds chirping right now the, the mic is not gonna pick it up though, because it uh, it works in the way that it doesn't really... Like, if I turn around right now and I just, like, sneeze behind the microphone, you're not gonna hear it, so... It only picks up things that are super, super close to it. Anyway, okay, we started off finally the day, or, like, we got the first win of the day, so good. Let's do more of that and less of mistakes. But yeah, I mean, oh, Astral, I think we had some really tough battles with him. I think he's one of the Akons that I, <laughs> I lose to every time. I wanna see quickly, was there... Anything else about the... Uh, oh, fuck. Ah, oh, goddammit. I keep miss... Um, wait. Okay, he took the Narses. Uh, he knows my roster. We fought so many times. Yeah, let's just, we'll just go with the UD. I'll, I'll let him have the Angora. I'm not even gonna pick that. Uh, do I have some wrong settings? Okay, never mind. Anyway, look, look past that. I just wanted to see if there's any other different uh, traits on Reddit about the quality of life thing. Okay, I, I guess not. I think even if Reddit isn't gonna talk about it, I think the uh, well, maybe they're gonna talk about it later on. I'm sure, but it's a very exciting thing, like for everybody. I'm sure, and I guarantee you that every content creator is gonna like make a video about it or make multiple videos about it. 
I, I might make multiple videos about it, to be honest. I, ca I can't wait to get it actually in the game. Kind of surprised he didn't go for the Ankara. He's kind of giving me the option to pick it, though. I mean, probably he just wants to go with Sifi anyway, since he got the Harima. And it's the R base that I always struggle against. Uh, I think last time I thought that maybe I had a close fight with him and then I was like, maybe I should have gone with Helicat. But Helicat actually wasn't that good. Anyway, we're just gonna go with this. I'm gonna go for the Arimo Baron. I think he's gonna pick Sifi, hopefully. He could just pick a lockout or something, but... I think I'm gonna go for Harima Ban and just try to survive until I can kill our base, but we'll see. Yeah, I, I think if he if he um if he's smart, he's not gonna go for a Sifi, but he was probably he was definitely banning the pick, and he could just pick a lockout here. Okay, Frolny. Uh I think he used that against me before as well, but I wasn't expecting it. He went with triple nuker. I think he actually did use triple nuker before too, to be fair. Okay, let's see. Maybe I can get my revenge this time and actually actually take him down for once. Maybe I have beat him. I'm not sure, but I definitely have lost to him multiple times. And the, the issue is because he, he knows my roster at this point very well too, so it's kind of hard to finish him at this point. Okay, interesting. He does have lots of stone skin as well. And even the R base is in 4P stone skin. I think we're gonna go for Polymorph on Nars. It's nice. We also buff strip the Frolny. And our base is gonna instantly get the Get the stone skin up again. Oh, that's funny. I'm getting uh, messages from the Finnish government about the... It's literally like Finland.com, let's say, on the Finnish, like, Finnish way. And it's about... Uh, not to get too much into politics, but it's about the fact that uh, it basically said that you have the right to vote in the EU parliament elections. I think... Um, how often? I think, are those every like six years or whatever? I think I have voted twice. Maybe twice or three times. I can't recall in the EU parliament elections. Yeah, I, I forget. Either twice or three times. But the candidate that I have voted for at least twice, he, he didn't get in either of those times and I wasn't expecting he, him to, so... I have a kind of a, kind of a weird track record with politics. I mean, I do both. Uh, I I do kind of follow politics a decent amount, but generally, I mean, I'm not trying to vote for like winners, of course. But pretty much nobody that I have. Well, I think uh, basically nobody that I have ever voted for has won in politics. Yeah, the, the, I think there's like somebody that I have voted for a second round that was my like fifth choice or whatever has won but basically nobody that I have voted for in politics has ever actually gotten elected so it does feel uh, a little bit uh, pointless sometimes but I know it's the thought that counts and you shouldn't vote for the winner if you don't uh, agree with him so I'm not gonna do that Unless it's like the second second round of presidential elections where my my candidate is already out, then I'm then I'm gonna vote my whatever best choice. Okay, I guess did we actually did we actually get the Ravens win against Astral? Nice. He ha he has been beating me. I think I'm pretty much met him in every last uh, last couple of live arena sessions, and I lose to him every time. On the last video, I had two really close fights against him. I could have almost won either one of them, but 
we still lost both times. It, 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 maybe partly because, um, I mean, he had the Mikage, I still picked the Helicat, but I did get the Helicat in that fight. But I'll drink some coke to that. Also, I'm not... Um, I'll try to get some videos on weekend as well. I got kind of busy weekend or like Friday and Saturday. I got some... Uh, my brother and so on are like visiting me for a couple of days, but... I got some uh, other videos planned. Maybe there will be... Well, actually... It probably will not be posted on... Um, Sunday, but I'm planning to make a video with Drog on Sunday as well, or maybe I guess probably a couple videos to, to be honest. But I got like multiple uh, multiple uh, like video ideas planned out that are are a little bit different than just my usual stuff, so stay tuned for that, but there's gonna be some videos with Drog. Probably not on weekend at all, I don't think. Unless he, he posts it on a Sunday. We'll see. Okay, we <laughs> we met the Warlord user. It's kind of rare to see somebody First pick Warlord, it's usually not something that people do. Let's go with the Ankara, yeah. It's kind of easier to adjust your team around it if it's the first pick. Maybe he's gonna go for double lockout though, w who knows. Double lockout can be... oh, you did. Okay, Wukong. Yeah, I'm definitely gonna go with UDK. Yeah, we have very good team actually if he picks a double lockout now. There's no way that he's gonna do it. Ankora can reset the cooldowns with the A1. And Rodos gets extra turns and so on. We can definitely just uh, over time get our cooldowns back and beat him. Even if that was his intention, I don't know if it was, but there's no way he can do it. I'm kind of shocked by his team. He's so high rating and it, his team doesn't look that scary. I don't know if he's going easy against me or did maybe I picked a lot of his main champions, but this team looks very tame in comparison to the teams that I usually... Like, even just the last team that we met with Astral, this kind of looks a little bit outdated and like a free-to-play free friendly team. Honestly, my team looks scarier than his and that's not usually the case, so... But he, he's still... He's very high points, he's like 5.5k points, so... I don't know what's up with that. He didn't even ban Armas. I feel like he's going super easy on me. Yeah, we're also he only had Dodges in Stone Skin, so we we stole three turn meter from three champions and insta instantly got a second turn and we even got the Dodges Stone Skin removed. Doesn't really matter that my Armas got polymorphed at this point, but we should be good. I, I can even instantly block revive this Wukong. I guess I... I mean, I could go after whichever one, but let's just get rid of the Wukong. Maybe there's a possibility that I, that I wouldn't have had the damage to kill the Staldos, but probably I would have, so... 
Anyway, I guess we're two out of three, so we're we're getting into it. I don't know why it's a weird thing uh, to feel or talk about, but like, um, oh wait, wait, we can, we can still lose. I, I always get so ahead of myself. He he one shot at the. <laughs> we still lost. Armand's died and Narsus died, and it's over. Okay, whatever. I I deserve that. I'm almost tempted to see if uh, UDK can can one versus one the Stalos, but what I was gonna say is that. Um, I did some, I, I did a call up yesterday, and I don't know why, it's a super weird thing, but like, I always get super nervous when I'm doing call ups with other people, not that I have done like many of them, but the couple that I did, I was super, super nervous about it, and I'm not when I'm just talking with myself, it's a weird thing, I don't know, I don't know why I get so nervous, but I do, but yeah, I, I totally deserve to lose this fight, I mean, I don't think I per se did anything like, uh, I guess I should have, I don't know what I should have done. Should I just polymorph the Staltus to play it safe? Maybe I should have polymorphed the Staltus instead of the Duchess, I don't know, but I thought I had it, but then <laughs> the Staltus came out of, uh, out of the bush and owed me, so okay, fair enough. <laughs> I lost the battle. I didn't see that coming, to be honest. Almost my UDK could have soloed it, but I didn't expect to happen, though it was pretty close. Anyway. Not not a big deal, though. Kind of kind of funny. I do have I do have the tendency that sometimes I feel like I already won the fight and and then I end up losing. By the way, speaking of uh, losing or not losing, I did a video with Russ yesterday, and many people might not even know him at this point. He used to be uh, a content creator in Raid. He doesn't play the game anymore, and he used to be very like well. He was basically the most competitive arena player. I mean, it depends how you define it, but like, yeah, basically the most uh, rank 1 placements, let's say. But we had a pretty interesting discussion about the arena and the old times and stuff related to Plarium and so on, so if that sounds interesting, go check it out. Um, Rats used to be like... I never really like... Uh, watched Twitch. I basically only started watching Twitch because Rats was, Rats was uh, streaming there and uh, doing like basically only arena related content, but nowadays I do watch it occasionally, but it's pretty much just because I was friends with Rats and he was streaming, so it, it was an interesting video to me at least. I don't know if you guys find it interesting, but Go check it out. Okay, again, again we got the Mikage Wukong combo and lots of debuffs on his team, so hopefully he will not uh, be able to ban the Dutchess. I, I guess I'm gonna go with Angor as well, so I'll have both the Clanus and the Polymorph, but I think we're yeah we're just gonna go pretty much the same peaks as I did against the other guy. I do have my Eva geared, but uh, it's kind of hard to use her in close second teams. I wish I had a stone skin for her though. If I had stone skin, I think I will bring her up more often.
Yeah, they're definitely banning the Armans. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna let that go. There was a little bit backlash. I I remember a few days ago. I kind of. I, I made a video thumbnail something like, Armans nerf question mark, and. There was like people on both sides. People were thinking that, um, agreeing that he should be nerfed, and people uh, thinking that I want him to be nerfed, and it was kind of funny. Uh, as I said before, I'm kind of 50-50 if uh, Armand's, Armand should get nerfed. I can understand both perspectives, but I'm definitely gonna pick him myself when I can, and I'm gonna ban him from enemies, enemies when I can as well. But I, I don't have as strong opinions about him as some other people. For, for me, the thing is that uh, I think Armands is super good and kind of hard to play against. There's not really like good counters. But there's a bunch of other champions like that, so it's not like Armands is the only one. Or even the best one, even though he's definitely one of the better champions, but I think he's not... I mean, a bunch of primals are way better than him, and even, even a couple voids as well. And I guess, uh, I mean, lots of people would eat the fuse and would, of course, be super, super sad if Armand's got any nerves, so... Okay, I feel like... I'm confident enough to say that we already won this fight, but I should I should stop being being so sure about the wins, but um I, I think we I think we got this. We got double reviver Narcissus healthy and um Okay let, let let's see how we do. I just need like one nuke and I can kill it. The rest of his team. He doesn't have those shields though, and uh, Elva is pretty high HP, maybe a little bit more tankier, tankier than they usually are. That could become a problem. But on the same token, he does have a lot of those buffs. I think I can get Mikage block revived soon as well, yeah. I might even get the get the Taras block revived to be honest. Damn the Bird sounds are super uh, soothing. I need to get, I need to get some bird sounds on my videos as well. If anyone knows some good, good bird sounds that you can use on videos, then hit me up. Okay, nice. What are we two two? No, okay, wait, three two. Okay, okay, nice. I still can't believe that uh, I end up losing the Staldos fight, that's kind of funny. Even though I hate my own Staldos, but I guess he can use his Staldos better than I can use my own. Anyway, um, let's look at the win ratio again. Was it 3-5 or what was it? Yeah, 3-5. I'll take it, but... I'm um, I'm super excited to see whatever new champions we get and whenever there's a next time that we get a fusion that is um, interesting for PvP, even though maybe I'm being kind of greedy because we got Armands and Ankara just recently and both of them are very good for PvP so we actually have gotten multiple top tier arena champions this year already 
but uh, of course I'm always interested to see whatever else we can get and can we maybe get the primal fusion at some point primals definitely seem to be the way to go nowadays yes speaking of primals I definitely haven't been using my Mikake as much as I should she kind of doesn't have that good gear so that's also deterring me a little bit of using her um, but I was planning actually to th think about the build on her what I could do the, the issue is just that uh, Armans is in my best speed build and I don't think I really have another good build for Mika, okay? But maybe maybe I can finally do a build with the new Cursed City set. O almost might be able to do it. I'll see about that. I know I have a chest with HP main stat and triple speed. But I don't know if I can make a full set or four piece or... I guess five piece? I think you want five piece on that set. Anyway, but I, I need to think about my Mikage a little bit more, especially in those fights where they are being, picking Lockout and maybe also Armands, and maybe I could go with Mikage and ban the Armands. Okay, but this time we're definitely going to gonna go with the Angora. Do I want to go? I feel like I have to go with UDK though. Helicat? Maybe I'll go with Helicat. I mean, he has two picks, so he can still pick a buff stripper or block block buffs debuff champion, but then he's not gonna have UDK at least, so I don't have to worry about that with Rotos or Wukong, even though he still has the Harima, so oh, well, our, our base is basically an UDK anyway, since she does put the town and stone skin. Okay. <laughs> this is not looking good. Yeah, no way I can win this battle, to be honest. <laughs> he, he, he has way too scary team for me to deal with. Not only is it just scary, like, in general, but it counters my team very hard, so... I don't have high hopes for this battle. I mean, I, I only... <laughs> I, could, I would be doing way worse if we didn't get Ar Armands and Angora recently, honestly. They they did give me a massive boost in live arena, so I kind of got into like a new peak and now I'm kind of being complacent here and I want to do even better, but I'm actually much better off than I was just a couple months ago. I mean, Narses, Angor and Armans, those are basically my three most used champions and all of them are new that we got this year. I, I wish I would have got the Narsus in this battle and not Rothos. Wait, does he have stone skin up? I don't think he does. There's so many buffs that I... Yeah, he has like 200 buffs on each champion. Okay, he didn't have it up, but we did weak it, so... Wasn't able to gain max HP. There's some interesting... Uh, maybe I should ask about it in content creator chat. I don't know if it's a bug or intended mechanic, but... I think with Rotos A2, which steals HP from enemy, if you weak it in PvE, you're gonna steal HP. But if you weak it in PvP, you're not gonna steal HP. I don't know why it works that way. 
it doesn't make any sense to me. M maybe there's some good reason for it, but it could be even a bug, w who knows. At least it doesn't doesn't compute in my brain. Okay, now we now we need to be scared of Lazarus when, when he gets to the second form and start uh, breaking things up. I, I said it on like a video, I think maybe the last live arena video, that I feel like Arman's, um, even though he's super strong and like meta defining or whatever, that he's. Um, He's still like mortal and you can kill him and so on. And I got multiple comments that um why why am I like saying that Armands isn't like super OP? That um yeah he might be squishy but he does like lockout and like million other things, so but yeah, I mean Lazarus did I say Armands? Lazarus is of course like um super strong. So you need some kind of support to keep it alive, but it's obviously one of the most uh, used and strongest live arena nukers. I'm just a little bit afraid that if I were to get Lazarus, and I'm always using him in, in a go second team, it might not be as good, I'm it, it pretty sure it shouldn't be as good as what, what other people are, what kind of success other people are having with him against me, but not like I'm gonna get him anyway, but like if you're able to hit him, I mean he's an easy mark. You can easily, easily destroy him. But with the Harima passive, well, with all of the support from his other three champions, it's kind of I don't have the I don't have the means to deal with this. I'm getting weak hits on the taunted uh, stone skinned R base that has Harima passive up, so. I'm not even doing any damage, and if I was, it would be a weak hit with 80% damage reduction anyway, with defense buff up and constant heals from our base and Zephy, so not easy. Maybe if I were to get some polymorph procs on Harima and Lazarus, though it's too late because Darius is dead, but if I would have gotten that and gotten some non weak hits on Rotos A2 and a stolen HP, maybe I could have gotten block revive and won this battle, but it would have been a very, very long shot. No, not the likely thing that I would win this. Anyway. I mean, that's a pretty mighty team, I can't get, I can't get too mad about that. Comparing to all of the people that I battled today, it's definitely the most uh, scariest looking team to me, as at least. But yeah, we're kind of on a um, standstill today. 50% win rate, not really gaining points, but at least not going all the way back to gold tree with all of these uh, enemies that I'm losing to. But, um, can we get a couple wins in the end to make it uh, make it feel good? How about that? But yeah, for next video I definitely need to look up my Mika again and try to do something about it. So I kind of feel like I'm often um, because of my nukers, I'm so forced to be QDK that I often don't have room for another support. I mean, I have barely used my Necret in a long time, but I really should go with Mikage instead of going with Double Reviver and UDK all the time. Like, yeah, like here for instance, the issue is that 
he has to Sifi with immunity and Armand. So even if I ban the Armands, I'm not confident that I'm faster than the Sifi. And I can't stun them and then it might feel like the Mikage isn't isn't gonna be that good. But I do want to use her. <laughs> yeah, if I don't if I become like Rodos and Ankor now we're just gonna face UDK. Yeah, I, I can't I can't risk that we must go with these two. Yeah. But who knows, since we're getting the epic empowerment and all of the quality of life stuff, maybe Plarium is listening. Maybe we can get epic only live arena tournaments or other type of uh, like restri restricted seasons, events or tournaments, whatever you want to call it. That would be interesting. Should I? I think I have some gear on. Oh, okay. We got me. I was trying to go with Cardiel, but I guess I was too slow when I couldn't decide what I want to do. But I think I have some gear on Cardiel. It's not my best one. I used to have Cardiel in the best gear on my account. Used to use him in classic arena defense and also a lot in live arena, also back in the day. I used to pair him often with. In it and make most out of the ally attack. But he's kind of been neglected now. But I think he has some gear, not my best gear, but he does have some gear on, so I could have used him maybe here trying to get rid of all of the debuffs that this guy is gonna have. But we got the we got the Mikake because I was too slow. Him buff stripping is almost a good thing for me. I don't know. Uh, th that would have been funny if he removed the stone skin. Wait. I thought... Um, how did Mikage survive that? I thought everybody was gonna die. Okay, I guess I'll take it. Yeah, maybe... Yeah, let's go for the harem. Let's um either Rotos is gonna okay nice. Either Rotos is gonna cut in and actually able to kill the Sifi with A3, or at least we're gonna force the revive, but okay. This is good. Okay, nice. 200 k I think we we got the Helm Smasher Brock there because he had defense buff up, but what now? Oh, oh, I wasn't expecting to kill the Galatir. That, that was an unexpected win. I didn't think I had any chance against this guy. I thought I had checkmated myself with the Mikage pick. But actually Mikage survived the bombs somehow and she was basically the reason why we won this fight. Yeah, I mean, here's another reason why to use, why I should use Mikage more, but the thing that I'm mainly thinking about is the fact that she has fairly good matchup against lockouts and is just a very strong speed threat, but I, I look into it for, for next time. I, I'm uh, I'm sure. Ah, this guy. This is the guy with the super strong Lazarus team. Oh, and he got the Armands again. Yeah, let's go with this. Maybe he picks Jartzes. If if not, I'm still gonna go for it. Yeah. There's just no other choice. I have to go either with Rotos, Wukong or Eva. And they're all gonna get screwed by the Harima. 
And he's gonna probably ban Narsus again, so... Maybe I'll go... I mean, Lazarus does ignore shields, but okay, let's... Let's go with Necroth. No. There's no way I can ban the Lazarus. He's gonna pick our base anyway, so it doesn't matter if I pick Rotos without UDK because um, our base UDK, both of them are equally bad, to be honest. I mean, our base is better in other aspects, but she also does do the stone skin single target uh, taunt like thing, so. Basically same as UDK passive. Okay, he's using the same team. I don't think even Mitral Hex would be that useful here. Should we just go for the Hail Mary with Mikage? I, I don't think anybody else of my supports is really effective here. I don't think Mikage is the counter to him, but he's kind of useful. But yeah, I would be shocked if we win this battle. Also, I really do like the. I mean, they're obviously putting some extra effort on primals to make them look shiny and special, but I really do like the artwork on like most of them. Like both Lazarus and our base have have super nice uh, visuals. I mean, everything in everything in Raid has to be fair. The worst looking champions are the old ones. They have definitely. Uh, gotten better with those, but even the old ones are generally super good, though some of them are maybe a little bit less effort than the, the newest Primal and Void champions. Like when they're, they're, um, they're re reusing the same 3D models, I mean, if you have played the game for long, I'm sure you know, but there's multiple Multiple champions that are basically reskin of the same one, like um, for instance, uh, Sinesha or Skull Crown. I think there's there's countless champions with the same model. I think uh, from Sacred Order, there's that old support that does freeze. I forget what's her name, but there's that, and there's bunch of champions with the exact same model like holding the staff on the other hand and like I think they're like um, standing with their heaps weight or something like that very specific but but uh, we, we have looked into this stuff before so I, I'll show it after this battle I guess And here we go with the stone skin and taunt. Rotos can't do anything. And he banned the Narsus, so yeah. Might as well surrender it. Maybe I need to bring back Staldus next time, but when I use my Staldus he just doesn't have the damage to kill people, though. I don't think I have the three star um let me check. Yeah, I have two star blessing. Right now he's like in Regen gear for Dragon because I haven't been using it for PvP at all. But I would need at least a three star blessing to get that 600 defense. I think the other guy that I fought had had it. 
Okay, let, let's take a look at the models of some old champions. Okay, see, see, I, I, no, no, not to get too, too into the looks, but, well, like I said, they have the staff in the other hand, and they have this, like, uh, very specific pose that they have the hips weight and so on, and there's um, I think, let me double check, both Sinus and yeah, Skull Crown have the same model. And I'm gonna forget champions, and <laughs> this is not something that I researched recently. Some old memes, but yeah, Frostbringer has the same one. There's a bunch of others, but I just I don't recall them out of the top of my head. By the way, Frostbringer is one of the like old champions that was at the start, and she does have super long, um, super cool visuals. It's a bit different than the, the typical raid looks, like she doesn't look like some kind of harbinger of death or anything like that. Not not supernatural or anything, but I really like the cloak. I think this cloak would be would be super nice skin on some MMO games like Black Desert Online or World of Warcraft. This this kind of reminds of some super cool looking uh cloak that everybody would use that like um in those games like in World of Warcraft you can like transmog items and have the looks of a different item than what you're using. People would use this cloak a lot in World of Warcraft if it existed. I used to try to she was one of the first champions that I got in raid and I used to try to use her a lot but she hasn't stood the test of the time and definitely could maybe get some buffs even though she does have a little bit interesting kit with double hit on A1 and uh, like basically getting the um, high uptime on heal reduction. Anyway, let's get back to battles. I think I should have time to do one more, maybe two if we're really fast and don't, tal don't talk about Frostbringer and other epic champions. I guess you can't really complain about it, but one issue I do have with uh, epic empowerment when they bring it up this late, I mean, and it's still good, I, don't get me wrong, it's super nice, but obviously people have had dupes of those epics many times over the course of, is it like two years since we got the empowerment, and you don't have enough room in the world to keep the copies, and there was no reason to do it, so people are not gonna have the copies to empower their favorite epics, like maybe Vokot or something. But, I mean, I guess there's some other things to do over time, so maybe some people even like it this way. And maybe Plarium's like it, likes it this way because there's more reason to pull shards, but uh, I don't want to get too negative on that because it's a very nice update, so I'll give props to Plarium and, and not cry about it. I mean, like I said, I did kind of feel bad seeing the Noobs video where he was actually saying that when he visited the, their office, the Plarium people were actually like super devoted to the game and played it a lot on the free time <laughs> and then players keep keep saying that they don't care and they don't play the game or know the game. I have definitely done that, not even just a little bit, but on many videos, so I did feel a little bit uh, guilty about that. <laughs> Maybe I should make an apology video to Plarium, who knows. I mean, I'm sure there's some people that have uh, have been more vocal about that than me. I mean, it's not really something that I focus on, but I definitely have have complained about it many times and said that do they even play their own game? And I kind of assume that they don't really, but I mean, I'm sure they do since they have done it so, like they have kept the game up for so many years. I'm sure there is many people that are actively playing it in the Blood staff as well. 
like the, the one one thing that I have said many times, which I guess I do feel bad about, is that I keep saying that we need to send the send the Stellarium employees to play play a live arena without lockout and stuff. And maybe that has been a little bit uh, uh, harsh from harsh from me, but it has come directly from the heart. So what can I say? I still kind of feel that way a little bit, but maybe I feel uh, like now I can see that may maybe there's another perspective to it, even, even though it should have been obvious from the start, of course, but... Okay, so he got the UDK and Rotos is kind of putting it in my face the, the other way around. Maybe we're gonna go with Mikake and Wukong this time. Maybe this is one of those opportunities to go ham with the Mikage. Oh, okay. He, he's definitely gonna ban my... Uh, Ankara, and I kind of ban, wanted to ban the UDK. I, I still have to ban it, but now I'm kind of... Um, Suspectable to the Tormin passive, but wait, what? Okay, he did. Yeah, okay, he still went for the Arman span. So Tormin passive is not that big. So I have one cleanse, so it doesn't put immunity. So I can cleanse the freeze and then put another freeze up again if I get unlucky. But I'm also removing it with the passive. I think Wukong has higher grit damage than Narses, but I can't recall it out of top of my head, but he has 4 star blessing, so surely. I really want to get the 4 star blessing on Narses as well, but those split souls keep eluding me. The nice thing about Wukong is that the A2 is only 3 turn, three turn cooldown, so it's kind of possible to get that back against the lockout teams. It's not completely impossible, and since he keeps getting back with the revive, you kind of get more ways to do that as well. Ah, I misclicked. I could have done the buff trip, but I didn't. Wait, wait, maybe maybe that was again unintended big brain play, because now we do have the shield up on two champions and we can definitely kill both of them. No? Okay. Justice was kind of close, but we did We did get rid of her with the second hit. I guess the first one didn't proc polymorph and the second one did, but Yeah, I think that's pretty much where we're gonna end today. I didn't... I kind of missed a little bit from the start. I didn't get the most battles done today, but it was pretty good. I didn't... Uh, I didn't destroy the biggest accounts in the game, but I did face some really, really tough enemies, and I was still using my old, old tactics. I don't have like a new strategy today, but we still did pretty good, so I'll take it. Anyway, stay tuned, maybe I'll make the apology video to Plarium for saying that they don't play play the game and care about the game. Let me, let me know in the comments, should I do that? Should I feel bad about it? Should I not? Like, am I, uh, am I giving them too much benefit of doubt or have I been a jerk or whatever in between but that's it for today good luck with your live arena and maybe maybe some shard pulls that you might do on the weekend but that's it have a nice day see ya